Hi, it is Dwyer. RichardDwyer.com. Keeping it free. Blogspot.com. Let's talk about a situation that is unclear even today on whether or not a murder took place. I believe one did. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say on Showtime right now they have one of the best documentaries I have seen on the death of former heavyweight champion Sonny Liston. It is a must see. It's called Pariah. Again, it's Pariah on Showtime about Sonny Liston's death. What I want people to do is to indulge me here because I understand what I'm about to say is going to be extremely controversial. Let me offer a disclaimer here. I'm not accusing anyone of any wrongdoing. Rather, what I'm doing is looking at the statements to police of someone who many people felt was the most special person in Sonny Liston's life, and that's his wife, Geraldine Liston, who is no longer with us. Right? All we're going to do is to look at these statements and to ask ourselves whether they sound correct. That's it. So, let's go back to January the 5th, 1971. Right? Understand, Sonny Liston told people that the best thing to ever happen to him in his life was meeting his wife. Now the month before this date, according to his former trainer, Johnny Taco, right, who was interviewed by the Los Angeles Times, Sonny Liston was in his car and his car got hit by another car. Sonny suffered whiplash. Right? Sonny ended up going to the hospital. Now, while at the hospital, they used the needle on Sonny Liston as part of their treatment. And Sonny hated it. He told his trainer that the worst part of being in the hospital was the needle. The trainer got the feeling that Sonny wasn't that upset over the car crash, that he was more upset over the needle. Let me also say too, the people around Sonny Liston, right, Johnny Taco, his trainer, never saw Sonny drunk. Never, right? The trainer did say that Sonny occasionally would have some clear vodka with him. But Sonny was not a binge drinker. Right? Close friend, referee Davy Pearl, would invite Sonny and Geraldine over to his annual Christmas Eve party. Right? At the Christmas Eve party. Davy Pearl never saw Sonny take a drink. Right? The people around Sonny did not consider Sonny Liston to be a heavy drinker. Many of the close people around him didn't consider Sonny Liston to be a drinker at all. So, on January the 5th, 1971, wife Geraldine returns from a Christmas vacation that she has taken without her husband. Right? The two are not separated. The two are living together. 
As far as the people close to them know, the two are still happily married. Geraldine is concerned because during her trip to St. Louis, of almost two weeks, she couldn't get in touch with her husband. Right? She calls, can't get Sonny on the phone. Let's remember, too. This is 1971. People don't have voicemail. People don't have telephone answering machines. People don't have cell phones. Sonny Liston is off the grid. His wife cannot reach him. Right, she arrives at the house in Las Vegas, which was in a posh area, with her seven-year-old son, Daniel. The couple's seven-year-old son, Daniel. Now she's relieved. She looks, she sees Sonny Liston's Cadillac in the driveway. She goes to the front door. The front door's unlocked. She walks in the house. Right? It's a multi-floor house. She opens the door. She smells something terrible. Right? It's an awful smell. As she would say in an interview with the BBC, I thought he must have cooked and left something on the stove. But I went into the kitchen and I didn't see anything there. Right? That's her quote to the BBC. She follows the smell. It takes her upstairs to a bedroom. There she finds her husband's decaying body. Right? Her husband has been dead for at least six days. The body is bloated. Now let's pivot here and let's ask a few questions. Right? Let me also point out that by Liston's body is a bottle of vodka. Does Geraldine call the cops? Or does she call someone else? Right? The answer is she calls someone else. She calls her lawyer. Right? Let me just point out too that after she calls her lawyer she then starts trying to reach a doctor. Now understand, on the show Pariah, they have several people who saw the body when it was discovered. Right? It was clear, it was clear that Liston had been dead for some time. In other words, his body is literally decaying. But yet, Geraldine Liston calls a doctor, not the cops. Right? When the doctor shows up and looks at the body, it's clear that Sonny Liston is no longer with us. Now the police, who when they show up, they notice Geraldine Liston's lawyer there. The police are not called for at least two hours. Right? At least two hours. Understand, Geraldine makes at least two calls before contacting the police. Right? Her lawyer and at least one doctor. Now, Liston's wife tells the police that her husband never used drugs. Right? Never. 
His former trainer, Johnny Taco, agreed and told the Washington Post that Liston was afraid of needles and would never have used heroin. Right? Never. Now, it's part of the public record that some of Liston's friends will call them associates dealt in hard drugs like heroin. Right? You have the descendants of at least one of them on the Showtime show. Right? But understand, Liston has friends who swear that Liston was afraid of needles and would never use heroin. Among them, his friend Davy Pearl. Among them, Liston's former dentist who tried to talk Liston into using a needle. Right from Philadelphia, Dr. Nick Rajnai. All of them claim that Liston was afraid of needles and never used heroin. Now the autopsy of Liston's body would reveal traces of morphine and codeine. These are byproducts of heroin use, but the amounts were so small that the medical examiner concluded that they could not have caused Liston's death. Right? This is not a drug overdose. That's very important. It is not a drug overdose. Liston has minute quantities of morphine and codeine in his system. Right? So, the coroner faced with this situation where Liston's body has decayed for several days. Where the drugs in his system don't indicate a drug overdose. Right? The coroner rules that Liston officially in his late 30s but people speculate that Liston might have been a few years older. Right? Like my father, he was born in the country and they weren't as diligent in the country in registering births as they were in the city. Right? So there's an absence of birth certificate documentation on Liston. But Liston was just a few years removed from being heavyweight champion. Right? The coroner rules that Liston, then believed to be 38 or slightly older, died of natural causes. A professional athlete. Now his wife has said that Liston had high blood pressure. Right? There was speculation that Liston died of a heart attack. She had an interview with Sports Illustrated where she said she believed her husband died of a heart attack. There's some speculation and questioning about why Liston was in a hospital. Right? His trainer believes there was a car accident. His wife believes that he had high blood pressure and had chest pains. But understand, his wife, his trainer, one of his best friends who went to his Christmas Eve parties and stuff like that, never saw Liston use a needle, believed Liston had a phobia to needles, and none of them ever saw Liston drunk. So, let me just say, the purpose of this video is to talk about the problems in Geraldine Liston's statements to police. Now, let me just point out, I understand the people around Liston felt that he and Geraldine were a great couple. That Geraldine saved Liston's life. Understand, Liston was an ex-con, 
Liston was supposed to have ties to the mob. He meets Geraldine. They get married in 1957. She kind of smoothed Liston's rough edges. Right? She gave Liston a sense of continuity in his life. People felt that she was holding him together. Right? Well, let me just say, it's now 2019. I'm a third party. I never met Sonny Liston a little before my time. I never met his wife. Right? Let me also say that I have a hobby of looking at true crime cases. And unfortunately, I've seen this scenario before where the person who's a loving family member might have a bit of complexity to them. There might be things about them that don't quite make sense or statements they made to the police that don't quite make sense. Things have to be questioned. You have shows right now on television, right? Homicide for the Holidays, for example. Evil Lives Here, where family members come across as loving at first. And then you find out that sometimes it's a little bit more complex than that. Right? So, let me just say, I find the timing of her vacation without her husband right around Christmas time and New Year's to be curious. Right? It's a little bit odd that a happily married couple wouldn't be together during Christmas and New Year's. If you want to expound on this situation, I hope you do so in the comment section of this video. If you knew Liston, if you knew his wife, if you knew the reasons why they spent the holiday season apart from each other, I hope you leave that information in the comment section of this video. Let me just say, on the show Pariah, they have the daughter of one of Liston's best business confidants, right? And she talks about how Liston's wife went missing for several days before one of his fights with Ali and that she found that curious. Just understand, this is not the first time before a big event in Liston's life. If you believe what's said on Pariah, where Liston's wife met, went missing for a few days, right? Or at least was apart from Liston before a big event in Liston's life. Now, let me just say, while she's on her trip, right, she makes several phone calls to Liston that go unanswered. And she comments on them to people around her, including her mom, right? Her trip ends when she tells her mom, look, I can't reach my husband. I need to go back to Las Vegas from St. Louis to see what's going on, right? Now understand, when she gets to the house, okay, Liston's car is in the driveway, but she should then see two things that should disturb her before she enters the house. The police saw them. Right? There are a number of newspapers on the doorstep. Right? Think about it. Liston hadn't been grabbing the newspapers from the doorstep. By the way, the police later used the newspapers to figure out Liston's date of death. Right? The first few are grabbed while Geraldine's away. But then several are not. That's how they figured out that Liston had died something like five or six days before. The official date of his death is December 30th, figured out using the newspapers. Now this is 1971. 
There were also several bottles of milk on the doorstep. So let's just say you're away, you can't get in touch with your spouse, you show up at the house, you see their car in the driveway. When you see the newspapers and the milk, wouldn't there be some panic? This is before she enters the house. Wouldn't there be some panic? You enter the house. You're overcome by a terrible odor that we now know came from human decay. Right? Let's go back to her statement to the BBC. She claims when she smells this decay that's all through the house. I thought he must have cooked and left something on the stove. But I went in the kitchen and I did not see anything there. Folks, I just don't find that statement credible. That's not the thought process of someone who's just had to step over several days of newspaper and milk on the front doorstep after not having heard from her husband for days. This statement to me has something wrong with it. It seems to me like there's an effort to present this as part of a narrative that's false. Right, again, I thought he must have cooked and left something on the stove. But I went in the kitchen and I did not see anything there. Let me also say too, when I look at crimes from earlier decades, I understand that there was a lot of sexism back then. Right? There were a lot of witnesses to crimes way back then that are playing into people's sexist beliefs. Geraldine Liston wants you to believe that she enters the house. Right? This is a woman who's in her late 30s. This is not someone who's a teenager. She's in her late 30s. She's been married to Liston for more than a decade. They've moved from Philadelphia to Las Vegas together. They have a seven-year-old kid. Right? Her story of being away from her husband during the holidays, showing up, entering, smelling decay, and believing it might be food in the kitchen, rings hollow to me. Right Now, I'll just say this. I'm not saying she's lying. But let's just say I have a hard time believing this. Well, let's continue. She follows the smell. She goes upstairs, right, which is not by the kitchen. She goes upstairs, she finds her husband. Now, it's interesting because many people have speculated, including the Wikipedia entries here on Sonny Liston's death. Many people have speculated that Geraldine might have cleaned up the house a bit before contacting the police. Understand, when the cops arrive, the house is very clean. Right? Liston isn't a sloppy fellow. This isn't the kind of guy who routinely doesn't pick up the paper from the front 
doorstep who leaves milk rotting on the front doorstep for days while he's in the house. He's not that guy. The house is well organized. Right? One cop who shows up and looks around the house felt the house looked like it had barely been lived in. So people feel that Geraldine in the hours that pass before she calls police may have cleaned up the house a little bit to hide the fact that Liston, public figure, might have been dabbling in drugs. Right? The police find a little balloon. It's a little balloon filled with heroin in the kitchen. But there is no syringes in the house. Right? The cops look through the house. There is no utensil in the house that looks like it had been used to ingest heroin on the night Liston died. Right? Somewhere along the line, someone makes a mistake. If they wanted this to look like an overdose, Liston's bored. He grabs a fifth of vodka. He then decides, hey, let me use some heroin. And then overdoses, or worse yet, kills himself. Right? He's been heavyweight champ. He's no longer heavyweight champ. He lived off that attention, and now he doesn't have a lot to live for. That's why he's not with his wife in St. Louis. Maybe he wants her to leave so he could have time to himself to do the unthinkable. Right? The problem with that theory is that there's no syringe in the house. The police find no utensil that would have been used to have Liston OD in the house. So that raises a question, for me at least. If she scrubs the house, if she's there with her lawyer, how do they leave the small amount, the little balloon of heroin, in plain view, in the kitchen? a room that she admits going in. Right? The only other drugs found in the house is a half an ounce of marijuana that apparently is in Liston's pant pocket. Understand, Liston is found wearing boxer shorts. The pants might have been something he took off. Right? There's a little bag of marijuana in Liston's pants. But it's in the kitchen area, right away from the bedroom, where police find a small balloon of heroin. Isn't that disturbing to you? The idea that someone could scrub the house and after not, and it's unclear whether she scrubbed the house. And after not calling the cops for hours, after calling her lawyer, after calling doctors, right, have the heroin out in plain view in the kitchen. Something here is just not adding up. This story doesn't make sense. If you believe that Geraldine scrubbed the house, why would she want to leave heroin in the kitchen? If Geraldine's lawyer comes over, right? No doubt Geraldine says, hey, Sonny's dead. You would think they would do their own independent walkthrough and would have come across the heroin that's in the kitchen. Also, why is there not a syringe anywhere? Right? That's consistent 
with the theory many have on this case that Liston was administered a hot shot that someone walks in with a needle hits Liston with the needle and then leaves right Liston doesn't do heroin in the house Heroin's not the kind of thing that Liston could do on the road and then drive home, park the car, and then walk in the house. Go upstairs. Go upstairs. And then die. Right? Liston, just the alcohol is unusual. People have never seen Sonny drunk. This situation seems staged to make it look like he's a black man with a drinking problem who is also taking hard drugs right but whoever did the staging forgot to leave syringes behind and if they left syringes behind then his wife in cleaning up the scene did not see or forgot to take the small balloon of heroin off the kitchen counter. Right? There's just enough in this scene to hint at alcohol and heroin use. The problem is that the autopsy doesn't match up with the heroin use. And the problem is the body is too decayed right for the autopsy to show you alcohol use so to sum up I'm sure that Sonny Liston had many friends from many walks of life right but we still don't know what happened the week he died. Right? Somebody seems to have set this up to make it look like he was there by himself using heroin without a syringe or spoon. Right? Without a syringe or spoon or needle. Right? Using heroin and drinking by himself and then he passes out and there's no one there to come get him. Right? That's, that's the way this scene is made to look. I don't know exactly how far. Right? I don't know how far any plot to hurt Sonny would go. But what I think I know is that the statements that were made by people to the police don't add up. Right? I just simply don't believe that Sonny's widow enters the house, steps over several newspapers, steps over rotting milk after not being able to contact her husband for days, smells decay in the house, and then thinks that Sonny might be cooking. That's preposterous to me. I also have a hard time believing that after she walks in the bedroom and she sees her husband of more than a decade decaying, literally, body bloated. Right? Bodies bloated. He's decayed. It's clear to everyone else that he's dead. I have a hard time believing she would call her lawyer before calling police if she's concerned about Sonny's medical condition, why wouldn't she call the hospital, call the equivalent today of 911? What's she doing calling a doctor? Is something else going on here? Is there some situation where, for insurance purposes, she wants an independent medical examination and does not trust? the coroner's office and the people of Las Vegas right she wants her own medical condition her, her own medical 
autopsy, so to speak, before contacting authorities. If there's that level of distrust, why is she sitting down for interviews with Sports Illustrated and, you know, the BBC? Sounding like a deer caught in headlights. Sounding like she shows up and she thought Sonny might be cooking. That, oh, Sonny had a heart condition and had suffered from chest pains and that she believes it's a heart attack. Why are we getting what to me seems to be the dog and pony show? If you want a rich story with layers that don't quite match up, there's a police officer who claims that it was common knowledge that Liston was a heroin user. Folks, I'm not buying that in the slightest. Understand, I do boxing videos here online. Liston's trainer would know. Right? There are other healthcare people around Liston. Liston's dentist, for example, would know. Understand, Sonny has been fighting the whole time. Sonny's not retired. Right? Sonny had beaten Chuck Webner months before. Sonny was trying to get a fight with George Shavalo. Right? There's also a mystery about Sonny's money. And I believe it deserves your attention. Understand, we know Sonny makes $13,000 off the Chuck Webner fight. 13000 might not sound like a lot today, folks. That was big money in the very early 1970s. Right? Understand, Sonny loses to Clay Muhammad Ali in the mid-60s. He then has several fights. He even travels internationally to fight. So if you believe that Sonny Liston was getting paid for these fights in places like Sweden, right? if you believe that Sonny was still active in his boxing career, if you believe that Sonny also was making money, and the show Pariah on Showtime makes a very convincing argument for this, he was making money. Hanging out with drug dealers on the west side of Las Vegas. Right? If you believe that Liston is hanging around heroin dealers. High margin. Right? Heroin dealers. And may have been involved in illegal high risk activity. Right? They even claim that the police told Liston, this is straight off the show. You have law enforcement people on the show talking about it. To stay away from West Las Vegas. In other words, Liston was in West Las Vegas so much that the police knew about it and told him to stay away from West Las Vegas because some of the heroin people there were going to be arrested. Right? My question is simply, where is the money? Understand there are a lot of theories about Liston's financial situation. But when he dies, there's no financial windfall there officially. Right? Where is Liston's money? Right? The death is curious. The financial situation is curious. His widow's actions in not calling the police for hours after finding his body, which was in decay. He had been dead for five or six days. It's curious. Right? The fact that the autopsy doesn't show any kind of chronic heroin use. There isn't even enough heroin in a system for them to conclude that Sonny Liston overdosed. 
and the fact that there's no syringe or needle in Liston's place and that there's several people close to Liston. Right, his Christmas Eve party throwing friend, for example. Think about it. Of all the holidays where you're a regular at a party, Liston and this guy were so close. Liston's over there Christmas Eve every year. Guy never sees Liston take a drink. Right, the fact that there are many people around Liston who don't even think he's a drinker tells me that this crime, and it's a crime to me, right, that this crime has many layers. Right, from this seat, the statements could be true to the police. But I just don't believe his wife's statements at all. Right? Not at all. Let me go further. I don't believe the police statements that I'm hearing. Right? It was known that Liston was a heroin user. Folks, go to Wikipedia. Somebody decided to put that in the Liston Wikipedia entry. Right? How is that even possible when there isn't even evidence here of an overdose? Nor is there evidence in the house of the utensil Liston would have used to kill himself. And if you believe the house was scrubbed, how could it be scrubbed where there's a little balloon of heroin left on the kitchen table? Right? On <laughs> in the kitchen in plain view where anyone could see it. Things don't add up here folks. It's a very rich story. Unfortunately I just don't believe we know what happened. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If there are any facts you want to include here. If you have inside knowledge from time to time I make a video and an older person, especially when the video is from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, right? An older person will come forward and say, look, I knew of this information, right? Go back and look at my Charles Starkweather video here. You'll see people from Nebraska leaving comments to that video. If you have inside information about what happened in Las Vegas in the early 70s to Sonny Liston, then I hope you leave that information in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.